On November 10th, 2020, the Xbox Series XS was released to the public, but months before that, it was confirmed that the Xbox Series XS controllers would still need batteries despite both Nintendo and PlayStation opting to have rechargeable controllers. Almost two years have passed since the first Xbox Series controller was released, and still, Xbox does not have a rechargeable controller option. Well, it does but it costs extra. I mean, why not just have rechargeable controllers like everybody else? I mean, your competition is doing it. Millions have requested it. It's not like you make any extra money by leaving out the batteries. Or do they? To get to the bottom of it, this reporter decided to hit the streets and Google it. Here's what I found. Mm. Okay, now first understand that not everybody wants rechargeable Xbox controllers. Some people like the flexibility that comes with AA batteries as a power source for the controller. You see, when you have batteries, instead of having to wire up your controller to charge it or completely switch controllers every time your controller battery is low, you can just pop out the batteries, pop in some new ones, and you're good as new, baby. But as nice as this is, the one problem, which is the problem for many people, is that you would have to keep buying batteries. Some people could end up spending up to $100 a month on batteries depending on how intensely and how competitively and how often you play your controller. Now many people dodge this by buying the Xbox Charge and Play Kit or doing better, something that I recommend, getting rechargeable batteries that you can use wherever or whenever. But even with these solutions, many wonder why doesn't Microsoft just put a battery pack in that bad boy and call it a day? Or at least give a whole controller that comes with that built in. No problem in having one kind of controller that needs AA batteries and another controller that doesn't. Why not? Let's get into it. After research so intensive that I couldn't even sleep, eat, or breathe, I was able to find out my answer. Like the video. It was originally theorized that Duracell and Microsoft had some type of deal going that had to have Microsoft continue to sell controllers that needed batteries. This was even amplified when Duracell UK marketing manager Luke Anderson said this. There's always been this partnership between Duracell and Xbox. It's a constant agreement that Duracell and Microsoft have in place. The deal is for OEM to supply the battery product for the Xbox consoles and also the controller's battery. So that deal is going to go on for a while. It's been going on for a while and I think it needs to go for a while more. Once that statement was made, everyone was pretty much sure that hey, this is a big money grab, Microsoft is a freaking thief, that's what they've always been and that's what they'll always be. But as, we turn, as it would turn out, that was not the case because Microsoft responded saying, we intentionally offer consumers choice in their battery solutions for our standard Xbox wireless controllers. This includes the use of AA batteries from any brand, the Xbox rechargeable battery, charging solutions from our partners, or a USB-C cable which can power the controller when plugged into the console or PC. So from what Microsoft is saying, they just want you to have a variety of ways to charge up your controller. Now, is it hoopla? Is it a bunch of malarkey? I don't know. Because if you ask the average person, do they really care, right? You're not gonna see a person with a smartphone say, wow, I really want a smartphone where I can replace my batteries. Mm, maybe in 2011 you might've heard that, but these days we all pretty much find that it's awesome to have great built-in rechargeable batteries that you could just charge on the go and keep the life of the battery running for a long time. In fact, after saying all this, now I'm positive that somewhere within Microsoft's ecosystem there has to be a set of contracts, deals, or business ventures at play that incentivizes Microsoft to sell controllers without rechargeable batteries. I mean, think about it. In a world where anything that can be recharged is getting recharged, why are they the outlier? That's something to think about. I don't know what Microsoft is really fighting for here, but I know that there are still people out there that do want to use batteries, and that's perfectly fine, though I just don't know how much the demand really is. Now, during my research, I did also find that apparently the DualSense controller runs for about 10 to 15 hours on a full charge, whereas Xbox Series X and S controllers will run up to 30 hours depending on the batteries that you have in the controller. So 
The playtime can definitely be elongated with an Xbox controller. Another argument that was presented was that Xbox controllers innately have a longer shelf life. Because you can switch batteries in and out, they're not as dependent on that one feature the way that a DualSense controller would be dependent on it. You see, once the DualSense battery goes bad, the whole controller is pretty much busted and you're gonna have to buy a new one. So there are pros and cons to this, the pros being that Microsoft gives you intense flexibility though some would argue that it's unnecessary flexibility. And the con would just also be that it's not as easy or as cost efficient. These are things that are at play. But I would love to hear what you guys have to say. What do you think this is? Is this a bunch of BS? Is Microsoft looking out for their consumer base? Let me know. But as always, Chuckavelli was in, and now Chuckavelli is leaving the building. Peace, y'all. Enjoy the rest of your day.